Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is a this is a look at the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, October 16th, 2013. We had kind of a uh, kind of a sloppy day today. Uh the price action was wasn't that bad after uh trying to digest a couple of decent gains. So we're going to give today's price action uh, kind of like a C C minus. Internally the market was really pretty weak. Uh so uh with the advanced declines where they are, we're going to give the uh Market internal a D on the day, especially since the uh, New York Stock Exchange uh, cum uh, advanced decline was uh, minus 1600. Let's move on and take a look at a couple of uh, the uh, major futures charts. Let's start with the ES futures. All right, here's a look at the ES futures. It had more or less what was just an inside day. We just swept uh, the previous day's high by a tick or so. Uh, but essentially we're inside and certainly the real body of today's candle was was uh, contained within yesterday's real body. Uh, one key point to uh, make sure you're aware of here is we have got this 13 exhaustion in place. The risk level is up here. So right now this is the uh, A wave to the downside. And this could just wind up being a B wave bounce that ultimately leads to uh, that C wave failure. It's too early to tell until we uh, take a new direction. But uh, that's definitely possible. So keep that in in your uh, thinking as you go forward here for the rest of the week. Uh, near term level 1706 and a half. Uh, today's high is going to be important. Seven days level uh, is the sheriff in town 17 uh, 18 17 19. Support to the downside is going to be 1687.50. First support, and then more important support coming in at the 50 DMA at 1674 1675 or so. Uh, the CCI is not overcooked here, so they could definitely uh, pivot this back up and break out of this little inside day and uh, take it higher if they so choose tomorrow, but uh, that remains to be seen. The uh, the NQs uh, had a little bit more of a negative day, in my opinion, just because of the, because of the design of the chart. Uh, they broke out to a new high, wound up settling uh, lower on the day and also below the close, uh, which is definitely a negative. Uh, to the upside, uh, resistance is going to be today's high about 3263 and then 3281 is the 6 ace level and the next important resistance to the upside to the downside the 10 EMA which is roughly uh previous day's low 3212 3210 is going to be important support there and then below that this gap window is going to come into play if uh things break to the downside at 3172 moving over to the Dow Industrials this is by far the weakest index today uh, was essentially uh, an inside day down <laughs> if you will we traded inside the previous day's candle because we had this uh, large range but it's still a pretty sloppy day so make sure you just uh, have uh, the two-day range marked off as key support and resistance if we release out of this two-day range uh, either to the upside or the downside that's going to be a notable, notable development Bonds were a little changed on the day. Uh, they tried higher prices. They gapped them up, but ultimately settled down just a little bit on the day. Uh, still in this very, very slight and gentle uh, downside bias. Key support is going to be this 2 ace level at 103, and then much more important support here at the static trend line, about 102 and a quarter, 102 and a half. All right, have a look at this chart in a while. This is the total put call ratio. This is kind of a gauge to see if people are, are rushing to put on protection. And we haven't seen, we've seen kind of accumulation here because you see this upward, general upward bias. But we don't have anything near any kind of a capitulation uh, where people are just saying uncle and just taking protection at whatever cost uh, they're asking for it. So haven't seen that yet. Usually you get that when you get that 1.25 uh, ratio here in the uh, put call index. But we don't have it just yet. But we do have an upside bias, so let's make sure we stay on top of this chart. Elsewhere internally, here's the 10-day trend up on the top. This is the uh, S&P cash. The 10-day uh, trend really didn't, didn't move the needle too much today. We had a kind of benign reading today at 0 0.88. Uh, not really uh, giving us what we need here for that overbought reading. We're still not that far away from it at 0 0.85, but uh, certainly didn't, didn't add on to it today. One thing that's interesting was everything was as weak as it was today, and we still had a trend that was below the baseline at one. So that just implies that uh, we could see uh, could see that overbought reading uh, if we get another uh, one more strong push to the upside and a real real low lead real low reading in a trend. 
Here's a look at the Sox versus the NDX on a ratio basis. The Sox had been leading pretty well uh, for a while there, but really kind of kind of fell out of favor and, and are starting to struggle again here. We're below this this key level here, which is going to be important to sustain this breakout in the overall NDX. Uh, this is a key breakdown here, as you can see. This is the weekly chart now. Haven't we haven't been able to really recoup that level. If we can recoup that level, we'll definitely see some better relative strength in the NASDAQ that can be sustainable. But, but for now, if this uh, key component, the SOX within the NDX, continues to struggle, that's going to be a problem for the NDX. All right, here's the cumulative advanced declines. Uh, they're still kind of basically flatlining here. The NDX has not been able to uh, break out to a new high. So right now we've got a non-confirmation of this new high. It's okay if it, if it happens uh, one, two, three days later. But if you don't get it within the same week, that's going to be a negative, uh, negative divergence. And we're going to uh, want to make sure we make note of that. But for now, we'll give it another day or two. And if the uh, divergence persists on the NDX side, which is uh, down here, the... Uh, the uh, Nasdaq side. Then we're gonna then we're gonna uh, kind of raise the red flag here. All right. Here's a look at another inter interesting chart. This is the uh, oil services. That's the OSX. That's the red line versus the uh, crude futures themselves, which is the blue line. We see some weakness where the crude futures just keep leaking to the downside. But we've seen a pretty good performance out of the uh, out of the oil services. The oil services actually tend to lead the uh, the crude futures themselves. So while we may bump into this 100 level with the crew futures, they're going to probably have pretty strong support there unless the uh, oil services starts to roll over. So expect the 100 level and crew to be a key buying opportunity unless the oil services roll over. Right now they're not. They're actually implying that that oil future should be accumulated right now. All right, moving on to the uh, multi-sector chart. Had a little bit of a bump up here in the XAU, and that's the uh, the gold line. Uh, so definitely just a just kind of a risk off day where there's a little bit of a, f a flight to quality um, or safety rather um, in the in the uh, XAU and all the uh, leading uh, you know growth oriented uh, sectors were lower on the day. The SOX was lower. The BTK and the BTK and the BKX were all lower on the day. All right, so here's a look at the uh, the major sectors uh, ranked from best to worst. Um, as we mentioned before, the XAU is a top gun. CRX was a good performer. The one that was kind of sneaky was the uh, Dow Jones Transports. They were a pretty good uh, performer today relative to everything else, and especially relative to the overall performance of the Dow. So happy to see that. That could be something that uh, we have to build on a little bit later. Also, the Oil Services Index actually, you know, was kind of in the, in the mid-pack, in the middle of the pack. So I think that's kind of a win here for the late, late cycle stocks when you combine how the uh, oil services held up uh, in, in the face of some very weak crude prices and did not underperform the market. And we had some decent performance out of the transports. The rest of the stuff was, was really kind of unconvincing and uncompelling. The SOX index was, uh, was fairly weak on the day. Intel were just reported, so we'll have to see how they, uh, they want to treat the semiconductors tomorrow after they talk about their capital expenditures and also their guidance going forward. So we'll learn a lot more about the SOX tomorrow. All right, so here's some of the individual sectors. Here's the XAU, representing the, the, the uh, gold names. Um, pivoting off of key support here at zero rates at 87.50. Bounced up to uh, run into that 10 EMA. If we get a close and a follow through above that, we're going to change this uh, chart to short term positive. Not there yet, but uh, definitely trying to work off of a key level. So we'll have to watch this next couple of days to see if we can get a flip here. The uh, oil services index had just an inside day here. Uh, trading at that 8 ace level, that's major resistance uh, at 281 and a quarter. So we'll see if we can bust out of this. If we bust out of this to the upside, definitely make sure you have a couple of uh, setups available to play on the long side there. The BKX, uh, have a, kind of a sloppy day. Uh, on a real body basis, we definitely uh, undercut the previous day's low, but uh, we're still above the 10 EMA. So we're still short term positive in the BKX. Here's a look at the semiconductors. Basically, an inside day using the 8 ace area at 500 as resistance. So we've got potentially a double top here. We haven't had any any close and follow through above that 8 ace level. This kind of all really depends on um, what they want to do with Intel and the uh, and the guidance tomorrow. BTKs. It's kind of a quiet little day. Still short term negative below the 50 and the 10 EMA. This is an inside day for the most part. So uh, if we 
do see some more selling on this. Make sure you have a couple shorts available uh, on your list tomorrow. Take a look at uh, the gold futures themselves. Went down and touched this 4 ace level at 12.50 today. Key support. Not surprised to see it bounce off of there, the first touch. Uh, you can see that the, the XAU is actually a little bit uh, more strong on a relative basis. So that's uh, uh, actually a good sign of, of potential strength. So I'll have to see if they can follow through. You want to see the gold stocks actually leading the gold futures themselves. And fin finally, here's a look at the um, oil chart. We're six days down in the seeker count. We're uh, using this 4 ace level here at 100 as key support. That's, a, you know, that's, one of the big, that's one of the big three Murray math levels, so expect key support there. And we'll see if uh, this wants to turn up. If this does turn up and the OSX is breaking out, definitely uh, make sure you're taking a look at either the futures if you trade those or the USO, which is the, uh, the ETF uh, surrogate for this. I'll put up the USO real quick here. This is the ETF that trades and approximates uh, the uh, oil futures. A little, little less liquid for sure, but uh, but definitely uh, want to have this available. Key thing here would be if we get back on top of this 10 EMA and go to short-term um, neutral. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.